Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth edition of the Kinetics Challenge. I'm João Carreira and I co-organize this workshop together with Andrew Zisserman and our ActivityNet colleagues. This year we are task B. Our goal has been from the beginning to create conditions for advancing video understanding architectures that transfer well to a variety of downstream tasks. Performance on the Kinetics dataset, dataset itself has been observed to correlate well with fine-tuning performance. The Kinetics dataset is composed of 10-second clips from unique YouTube videos. Each one of them has been annotated with a single label. In total, we have currently 700 human actions with at least uh, 600 examples. The main task we have defined is simple 1 of k classification, similar to popular benchmarks such as ImageNet. The evaluation metric you use is the average of top 1 and top 5 errors, so lower is better. We use the top five error because some human action classes tend to co-occur with others. In those cases, there is not a single label that is correct. And so we are happy if our ground truth labels is in the first five predictions made by a classifier. Our list of 700 classes is wide ranging and includes, for example, giving or receiving award, lawnmower, racing, hopscotch and pushing car. There's a wide variety of scenes, indoors and outdoors, camera motions, uh, from static all the way to very shaky, uh, clothing, body shapes, objects, number of people, etc. Here are a few more examples. Uh, there are many person-person interaction classes such as uh, tickling. We have always been proud of our dance classes which should promote better motion representations. There are also plenty of exercise classes such as bending back as well as party classes like beer pong. This is the fourth edition of the challenge. We have collected additional data each year. Initially, we enlarged the number of classes at CLIPS from 400 classes and 250,000 training examples in the first year to 600 classes and 400,000 training examples in the second year until 700 classes and 550,000 examples last year. This year, we reused the data set from last year, which we call Kinetic 700, and have collected instead new AVA style annotations for a subset, subset, subset of the videos bounding boxes for one frame in each video with multiple atomic labels for each person. Details about each of these data sets, how they were collected, number of examples, list of classes, etc., can be found on archive. Kinetics has had a tremendous impact. Dozens of new architectures have been developed and tested using the Kinetics data, which led to large improvements in most downstream tasks from UCF-101 to HMDB-51 to charades, AVA, ActivityNet, etc. I'm listing here just a few examples from the top of my head at the risk of missing many other great architectures. As I've mentioned, uh, this year we have collaborated with Google Research and created a crossover dataset of Kinetics and Ava. This combines the strengths of both datasets. On one hand, we have the wide diversity of scenes of Kinetics. On the other hand, we have the detailed annotations of Ava, including bounding boxes around people and multiple atomic action labels for each person. We annotated one frame from each clip, on um, so far around 140k kinetics clips. The combined AVA kinetics data set has uh, 624k annotated frames up from 385k and uh, 238k annotated videos up from 400. I strongly encourage everyone to check task C session of the workshop later on today. Without further ado, let us move to present the challenge results. We had only four entries this year, but they were quite good. Overall, they achieved 3% lower absolute error. Here I'm talking about the average of top one and top five error. This represents a 17% relative improvement over last year, which is already quite strong. And here comes the runners up this year is the team led by uh, Dong Liang. He from the University of Science and Technology of China. They obtained amazing results. Congratulations to them. And for first place, we had two teams with very similar scores. A team from Google Cloud led by Zixiao Lu and a team combining researchers from the Chinese University of Hong Kong and SenseTime led by Zi Lin. We will hear talks from both of these teams later on in this session. Many congratulations to both teams. And I'm really disappointed I can't deliver the, their prizes personally this year. Uh, let me first show last year's results where JD AI research took first place with a score of approximately 17.9 average of top one and top five error. This is much better than the simple I3D baseline that gets 29.3. This year, 
Three teams improved over last year's winner by a significant margin, with Google Cloud and Souk since time achieving around 15.0. This is a very good improvement. <coughs> Sorry. We did a little bit of analysis on the results. First, let's look at top one accuracy for the easiest 20 classes. Here, 1.0 means the method is perfect, whereas 0.0, .0 .0 would be terrible. We can see all methods are nearly perfect. Let's look at the absolute easiest ones. Classes such as playing squash and billiards tend to happen in very distinctive scenes. Making latte and land sailing have very distinctive objects in them, namely the cup for making latte and the vehicle for land sailing. The tattoo class has a quite specific texture, whereas for helmet diving, there is little intra-class variation. Snow kiting is a combination of a distinctive object in distinctive snow scenery, and stacking cups has quite notorious patterns of cups. The hardest classes are a bit more interesting. Here we show Loa's top five accuracy, again from zero to one, where zero is terrible and one is perfect. We can see that, uh, that some of the hardest classes like waving hand, staring, or pinching have nothing to do with particular scenes nor objects and are about simple gestures. There are other examples of the same type, such as drooling, laughing, winking, and sticking uh, tongue out. Then there are also complex social actions such as answering questions or photobombing. Other examples include looking at phone and lifting hat, which use objects but in subtle ways, such as with gaze in the phone case. Also, it is visible that here some of the methods look considerably better than the others on some of the classes. For example, the Google Cloud approach is much better than the others on using puppets and looking at phone. And the Souk sense time method is head above shoulders above over the rest on pinching, being excited, and face planting. And USTC Beidou is really good at laughing. Looking at the hardest classes, one can see that one common factor is that they tend to co-occur with many other actions, for example, staring. Waving hands can happen pretty much in any kind of scene, making it hard for models that latch onto particular scenes. Pinching can be applied to different body parts, and twiddling fingers is not one very specific hand motion. Winking and licking are a bit like some of the previous hard classes in that they can compose with many other actions. Answering questions and photobombing require more social understanding, how multiple people interact, perhaps even when some of them uh, are not visible. So this year, uh, for conclusion, we had fewer entries than last year, only four. And this may be partly explained by the lockdown in many places in the world, which means many people have more immediate priorities than participating in scientific challenges. Another factor may have to do with the increased difficulty of obtaining our data. Third, of course, it is expensive to train models in such a large video data set and even harder to compete with industry in this area. Current benchmark results are very high and set a difficult, uh, difficult entry bar. This year, we have another round of strong improvement, and I'm really curious to hear the talks from the co-winners to find out what they have done. In terms of plans for Kinetics, we are hoping to release soon a new version of Kinetics 700 that we call Kinetics 700 2020. This replaces the videos that went missing since last year and adds more examples. All 700 classes will now have at least 700 examples instead of 600. Our main focus is now to collect more detailed annotations. We started by adding AVA boxes and labels to a subset of Kinetics videos, and we hope to continue this work. There is also now Context, which annotates multiple repetitions of events in a clip. And personally, I think there's still a need for a large data set having object annotations in video. It would be interesting to do this in Kinetics, but we do not yet have specific plans in this direction. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's it for me. Let's hear it from the winners of the challenge, starting with Z. Thank you. So first, I would like to thank the Activity Net workshop organizers and the Trimmed Activity Recognition Kinetics task organizers for giving the chance to present our solution, representing our team from the CUHK Sense Time Joint Lab. In case some of our audiences are not yet familiar with the dataset, 
Here I have listed some information. So basically the dataset for this task named Kinetic 700, uh, it is a trimmed video classification dataset. That is every part of a single training sample belongs to exactly one of the predefined 700 classes. Uh, yeah, and the sample number listed here is the number which we are actually able to obtain at the time of our download. Uh, for more detailed information, we refer the interested audiences to the article cited here below. Yeah, and Kinetic 700 data set, it is uh, actually not only used in this challenge, but it's also a very effective data set for pre-training. Yeah, it is one of the largest open source video classification data set. Uh, so it's uh, like the ImageNet data set for image recognition, pre-training on Kinetic 700 usually offers better performance in a number of downstream tasks. Uh, okay, so here we present an overview of our submission. Uh, so basically, it is an example of all the models listed here. Mm, it is a mixture of a few heavyweight uh, RGB slow fast models trained with different configuration and several lightweight models uh, with either different model structures or different input modalities, uh, which is intended to offer more diversity. Um, at the same time, for this table, uh, we would like to point out that uh, the accuracy listed here are actually not necessarily the best results, yeah, especially for example, uh, these two very big slow fast networks uh, actually performed lower than expected. Um, currently, we conjecture that uh, this is because we have not trained for long enough. Yeah, as you know, the time for the challenge is sort of limited. Um, so the results listed here are only the models we use for our submission. Mm, yeah, and we do plan to release th these pre-trained weights, uh, but maybe after we obtain better results. Yeah, and we are still actively tuning the models, uh, hopefully. So hopefully we can release the improved models as soon as possible. Uh, so for the next section, I will introduce some details about our ensemble components. Mm, yeah, and actually for the model itself, uh, I think most of the models we use here uh, have a better description in their original papers. And we have cited the corresponding articles in the bottom of every page uh, for your reference. Mm. So instead of describing the models themselves, uh, here we want to focus more on some practical experiences uh, when we are actually using these models. Mm, the first and the most important one in our ensemble uh, is slow fast. Uh, basically, it matches a sparsely input heavyweight branch with a densely input lightweight branch uh, so that it can achieve good trade offs uh, between network complexity and input frame number. Mm, generally speaking, it is a very simple yet effective method, yeah, so also very elegant uh, in my mind. Mm, as I believe most of our audiences are familiar with this work, mm, we are not going to stay here for too long. Uh, just to mention that uh, this is so useful uh, that it also serves as one of the backbones uh, of our submission to another track of the workshop, uh, which is the AVA or Special Temporal Action Localization Track. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, you may also have a look at the presentation in that track. Uh, where my other teammates will present their solution uh, to that challenge task. Mm, from here, uh, our models will be more lightweight. Mm, actually, we have trained the slow fast networks for nearly one month uh, on maybe some 100 GPUs. Mm, and I hope you can find the next models useful uh, if computation budgets uh, is kind of limited. Mm, the first of these uh, lightweight models uh, is the Channel Separated Networks, uh, or CSN. Uh, basically, it introduces channel separated convolutions mm, that is similar to the depth-wise convolutions uh, in two-dimensional networks uh, to replace the standard heavy 3D convolutions mm, so that our computation is reduced uh, while almost without compromising the accuracy. Mm. 
Uh, and another important reason uh, that we got to make it fast uh, is that uh, we found that uh, Instagram uh, 65 million uh, or IG 65M uh, pre-trained weights are actually very useful. Mm, so we can fine tune with a much shorter schedule uh, than training from scratch. Mm, as a result, uh, as I have written here, uh, uh, it, it is actually constructed uh, in less than three days yeah, and actually it's done in the last week uh, before the submission deadline. Mm, yeah, and there's uh, another practical problem you may experience, uh, as I have stated here, uh, it is that uh, even with some very recent versions, uh, some deep learning framework, uh, for example, PyTorch, uh, can be very slow when doing 3D channel separated convolutions. Mm, so here we point out that uh, this is actually not a big problem uh, because actually uh, with a customized CUDA kernel, uh, it can be easily optimized uh, to a fairly large extent. Mm, we may also consider sending a pull request to PyTorch mm, after we polished uh, our implementation a little uh, to, make, to meet their coding standards. Um, another lightweight network we have used uh, is Temporal Interlacing Network, uh, or TIN. Mm, as you may be less familiar with this work, mm, I have posted the schematics here. Mm, to introduce uh, this work, uh, we may start from the Temporal Shift Modules, uh, or TSM. Mm, in TSM, uh, they shifted the feature map along temporal dimensions uh, in some channels. Uh, so that in this way, uh, we can actually have some interactions between uh, adjacent f uh, frame features. Uh, so, uh, and the computational cost uh, is equal to forwarding every frame with a two-dimensional network. Mm, and temporal in information is also taken into account. Mm, so our TIN here uh, generally uh, make the model more flexible uh, with negligible additional computation. Mm, so generally it achieves better performance uh, than TSM uh, at roughly the same computation cost. Uh, more specifically, uh, TIM makes the temporal shift continuous and learnable uh, as here uh, given by the offset net. Mm, uh, there is also an additional weight net here uh, that remodulates the shifted weights uh, before concatenating them back to the feature map. Mm, so that is uh, the overall framework of our TIN modules. Mm, as you can see, uh, TIN is actually more two-dimensional focused, uh, with three-fourths of its channel unshifted and working in the same way as a frame-level 2D network. Mm, while at the same time, TIN is also better at modeling long-term dependency mm, as the learnable offset net uh, actually allows the temporal interactions to stretch beyond the adjacent frames. Mm, so this makes our motivation to put this in, uh, that is uh, to be complementary with the previous 3D convolution-based architectures. We have also introduced two additional modalities, uh, namely audio and optical flow. Mm, so here we first present our audio network structure. Mm, basically, it tries to follow some audio recognition common practices. Uh, for example, as you can find in the AV slow fast work. Uh, basically, we first use a Fourier transformation to transform the audio wave into frequency domain. Mm, and after it is in frequency domain, it actually becomes a two-dimensional input and can be processed by a modified version of image recognition network. Mm, specifically, uh, we modified a ResNet 101 uh, by removing striding and pulling in the first stage and decompose some 3x3 three three convolutions uh, into consecutive 1x3 and 3x1. Mm, uh, and this modification is actually also similar to the one used in the AV slow fast work. Mm, and in practice, uh, this network uh, is actually very fast to train, mm, uh, maybe in uh, roughly one day with a single machine of eight GPUs. And for the optical flow network, mm, we use a uh, same slow fast 101 model. Uh, the model structures and training schedule uh, is identical to the RGB slow fast models, uh, except for necessary adoptions. 
um, we also use an alternative optical flow algorithms because we found uh, the commonly used TVL1 uh, is actually too slow to compute uh, on the general purpose hardware uh, in our hands. Um, we found that dense inverse search uh, or DIS uh, optical flow uh, is actually a good alternative. Uh, being several times faster uh, and offers comparable uh, recognition accuracy. Mm, finally, after we obtain all our models, mm, we do ensemble in the procedure we have shown here. Mm, so first, we tested all models with 128 frames input, uh, regardless of how long their training input is. Uh, we found uh, this can generally uh, increase the validation accuracy slightly. Mm, then basically we want to construct a weighted sum of predictions uh, from every model mm, in order to obtain a good weight between the models. Uh, we use grid search to find the best weights uh, that can maximize the accuracy uh, on the validation set. And then we use the same weights on the test subset uh, to generate our submission. Uh, for the last section, I would like to introduce our open source project uh, that is Xtemporal, uh, which can hopefully also serve as a conclusion. Mm. As I have stated in the dataset introduction, uh, we have found that Kinetic 700 can provide a very powerful pre-training uh, that can boost various video recognition tasks by a relatively large margin. Mm, while on the other hand, Kinetic 700 is also a very large dataset, uh, which may consume a lot of resources to train from scratch. Mm, so as I said, uh, we plan to release some of our Kinetic 700 models uh, so that it can serve as a pre-trained model and hopefully uh, benefit the video recognition research community. Mm, so here we are introducing the open source project Xtemporal, uh, which will include both our validated implementation mm, of several state-of-the-art models and some very large model weights, uh, which may take thousands of GPU hours to train. Mm, and notably, uh, in addition to supporting this challenge, it has also supported the winner solution of the last year's multi moments in time challenge. Mm, and of course, it is also designed as a research-oriented, uh, so that it should be very easy to extend with your novel research ideas. Mm, the first version here is already available on GitHub, and we are releasing more models uh, used in this challenge uh, once we have finished tuning the models uh, to a better accuracy. Mm, and for detailed instructions and future updates, uh, please follow the project link uh, that I have pasted here. Mm, finally, uh, thank you all again for your time. Uh, please feel free to contact us uh, if you have any questions mm, and wish you stay well during this hard time. Hello everyone, I'm Zhi Chao Lu from Google. I will talk about our winner solution to the kinetics task in ActivityNet Challenge 2020. This is a team effort with my amazing colleagues, Xue Han Xiong, Ying Xiao Li, Jonathan Stroud, and David Ross. I want to highlight two key innovations in our approach. One is to portray our 2D or 3D convolutional networks on large scale extra data with little or no supervision. We will show that this is an effective way to improve the accuracy and the generalization ability of the models. The other innovation is using multimodal feature extraction, including a rendered post representation, which offers complementary gains to the final performance. As I mentioned, we use both 2D and 3D networks in our approach. The 3D backbone we use is ResNet 101, with a few key modifications. First, we remove all max pooling in the temporal dimension. We find that applying temporal downsampling in any layer degrades the performance. Second, we add a feature gating module after each residual block. Feature gating is a self-attention mechanism that reweights the channels based on the context. We also explored adding feature gating modules after every residual cell, which achieves similar results. 
So we decided to keep the former configuration given that it's more computational efficient. These two modifications can significantly improve the final performance of our model. Another backbone used in our approach is EfficientNet L2. EfficientNet is a family of widely used 2D classification networks, and L2 is the most powerful one. Please see the table for a base EfficientNet architecture with nine stages, also known as B0. The L2 version is much wider, deeper, and larger compared to B0, since it applies coefficients to increase the number of channels, number of layers, and the input resolution. In our setup, we apply EfficientNet L2 on 32 evenly sampled frames from the original video, and then use the temporary put features for classification. We use 475 as input size instead of 800 due to large memory footprint. Labeling videos for hundreds of classes is expensive. So we try to utilize videos with weak labels. The simplest scenario we can think about is searching for videos with a keyword on search engines. During searching, one can easily find tens of videos with relevant information presented in the metadata around, such as title and description. In this slide, we show the video search results from three popular video search engines using the query Play Basketball. It's obvious that many of the videos in the search results are very relevant to our topic. Following this idea, we use the Kinetics class names as queries to collect videos from a popular video sharing site. For each of the 700 Kinetics classes, we collect 100K examples. Note that we carefully remove all the videos in the kinetics validation and test set from our collected data to avoid data leaking. Collecting data in this way is easy to scale and has very low cost. However, the data quality might be low due to the noises. And we also need to define a way to use the information hidden in the metadata. So what is the smart way to utilize these weak labels? Our pre-training process involves two losses which are applied simultaneously. First, we apply a ranking loss, which encourages the learned video representation to be similar to the pre-computed text representation of the video title. Second, we apply a classification loss in which the model must classify which of 700 kinetics classes was used to mine this video. The performance gain from this pre-training is significant. Comparing with training from scratch, our weekly supervised pre-training improves the top one accuracy of REST 911 model on validation data set of Kinetics 700 by 3.2%, from 71.2 to 74.4. In addition to weekly supervised pre-training for 3D networks, we use self-training with noisy student to enhance the performance of our 2D networks. Noisy student training extends the idea of self-training and distillation with the use of equal or larger student models and noise added to the students during training. The model is also super simple. We train a classifier on ImageNet and then infer labels on a much larger unlabeled data set. After that, we train a larger classifier on the combined set. At last, we iterate this process and adding noise. To make it more intuitive, here is a flow chart of the training process. More specifically, a efficient map model is first trained on ImageNet labeled images, and then used as a teacher to generate pseudo labels for 300 million GFT and labeled images. A larger student efficient net model is then trained on combined set of labeled and pseudo labeled images. Noises such as dropout, stochastic depths, and data augmentation via random augment are introduced to the students during training for better generalization. By iterating this process, the final student efficient net L2 model achieves 88.4% top one accuracy on ImageNet. And we use this pre-trained model to initialize our training on Kinetics 700. We also explored multi-model feature extraction in our approach. 
Many works in the video action recognition literature have shown that two stream models are necessary for achieving state-of-the-art performance. In our approach, we extracted three different modalities from the original videos for the task. We first extract RGB frames from the 10 second video at 25 FPS. The longer dimension is then resized to 400 pixels by keeping the aspect ratio. To model the change of consecutive frames, TVL1 optical flow estimation is used to extract the optical flow image that represents motions between consecutive frames. For post estimation, we use PostNet approach with ResNet backbones, which is pre-trained on Coco dataset, and produces key points for each detected human in a frame. We overlay the rendered post information onto the original RGB frames to generate a third stream, which shows complementary gain in later model assembly. Finally, we ensemble multiple 2D and 3D models trained on different streams as our final model. The table shows the performance of all our models used in the final assembly. The 3D models are a ResNet 101 model trained on RGB frames, a similar ResNet 101 model trained on RGB frames, but with higher input resolution, and another ResNet 101 model trained on optical flow images. The 2D models are efficient net L2 models trained on RGB frames and rendered post images. An interesting find is that EfficientNet L2 unsampled frames performs the best among all our 2D and 3D models. This may tell us that Kinetic 700 is still a scene focused dataset, and it may be worth considering better ways to capture motion cues in 3D convolutional networks. To summarize, our winner solution uses large scale, weakly supervised pre training, which is shown to be effective strong 2D networks to capture context information in the scene, and a rendered post stream which provides complementary gains in the final model assembly. Thank you for your attention.